Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, today's session is uh, going to be taking Bayer into account. Why introspective promise more and deliver less? Thank you and hello everyone. My name is Deepak. I'm an engineering manager in Red Hat. I am very glad that I could excite you in this session. So about me, I spent five years in PTC, uh, around 10 years in Red Hat. Uh, I'm from a quality engineering background, but very recently moved into development engineering. And I am from that time when Jira was just a bug tracker and they had not thought about putting uh, story points in fractional numbers yet. All right, so about today's session. So what uh, I am planning to do is I'm planning to equip you all with some of the thoughts and some of the knowledge which I have, uh, I have read, I have researched about retrospectives. And uh, I think and I hope that uh, if there is a situation where you have to probably lead or do a retrospective yourself, uh, you can uh, that that knowledge and that information can come handy for you. In a nutshell, uh, today's session is going to be about rethinking retrospectives as we know them. All right. So before we start, I want to uh, I want to make sure that we all are on the same page with respect to definitions of some very common terms, right? So reflection is a uh, consideration of some subject matter, idea or purpose, right? For example, uh, let's say today morning I woke up, I had uh, I had an argument with my wife and then, uh, which obviously I lost. And then I went to take a shower in the bathroom and while taking a shower, I reflected on uh, that argument, right? Uh, without a purpose, right? I, I don't want to be an improved argument maker so that I can defeat my wife in the future, but just for the sake of it, right? I reflected on it. And so what, what were the things that I said, probably which I might have said in a better way to probably win that argument or, or maybe win the fair play award in that argument. But uh, that's, that's pretty much about reflection where you sit and uh, without any purpose, you reflect on uh, things that happened in the past that matter to you. And then retrospection in our context of agile and everything is reflection in anticipation and with a purpose, right? We, we uh, by a process or in anticipation of improving something in the future, we sit and reflect on the past. That's how we do sprint retrospectives as well, right? We have a purpose to improve ourselves for the future sprints or future iterative development. Okay, so in, I think, 1983, Donald A. Sean uh, wrote a book called The Reflective Practitioner. The idea was how, how do uh, people who are great in their jobs do, do reflection, right? And uh, there is another book by uh, a surgeon called Better. It's not the name of the surgeon, it's the name of the book. I don't remember the name of the author. I think it's Atul Gawande. Uh, he also says the same thing. He says that people who are experts in their field, they do a lot of reflection. And how good are they in their field depends on how quickly they get the feedback and how quickly they are uh, able to reflect on that feedback and probably make amends on their future, uh, future actions. So Dr. Sean uh, divided reflection in two parts, reflection in action, right? So let's say during a football match between Brazil and Argentina, that is an action, right? It has a quick feedback. The result is the feedback, whether it was uh, the win of one of the teams or it was a draw. The result is the feedback. It's a 90 minutes uh, window. And if someone is doing reflection inside those 90 minutes, that would be called reflection in action. And once the game is over, let's say Brazil won, and then they, the team sits, the Argentinian team sits together with their coach and their staff, and then they do a retrospective on what went wrong in this game and how could we beat Brazil in the next game, stuff like that. That would be reflection on action, right? After the event has passed. And when you draw parallels of this approach with uh, working in an iterative development cycle, you'd say that the feedback comes when the software is GA or the feedback comes when you demo your sprint work to your stakeholders. 
right and that is exactly how when we do our uh, actual uh, retrospective right in 3 weeks or 2 weeks whatever time and then uh, there is another book by this uh, nobel prize uh, winner uh, psychologist called daniel kahneman uh, called thinking fast and slow and in this book uh, dr kahneman says that uh, there are two types of two types of happiness to be honest one is in the moment fleeting feeling right and then the second one is uh when you once you once you start reflecting on what happened in the past right think about it uh, how you feel in your job is very different than how you feel about your job in most of the development uh, sorry developing economies and uh, countries like india work life balance is has never been a great uh, great uh, what what do we call it hiring incentive right because people people will people want to get into a job they want to experience the pain the stress and all of that as long as they can after one or two years uh, sit back and reflect on that job of three years they they know that they have achieved a lot they got promotions they got good salary increments and all of that and they started a good career even even after experience in in job they were slightly unhappy because they were facing those things on a daily basis but uh, when they reflect on that they feel very happy and proud that they they achieved that so the thing is that our remembering self always takes 90% of the time takes all the decisions for us which which uh, some of the, some of the times are not in the best interest of ourselves right okay uh, if you if you see if you remember this that's good this is called uh, deming spiel or reward cycle based on uh, based on the uh, guru of sir edward deming who created this in 1950 and all of the iterative development processes and continuous quality improvement processes started with this do check act and plan the check part is where modern sprint retrospectives live right we do something and then we check uh, how are the results uh, did we do something wrong and then we start uh, acting on those results and we see that okay uh, what are the changes that we need to make but do you think that modern retrospectives work like that they are rife with boredom politics and uh, even if you get some action items to work on they they might not be the best action items that your team needed they are uh, they are those action items which the most important people in that hierarchy uh, wanted to happen right it's not that the team needed it if you if you look at the philosophy of uh, agile it means that there these team has to be autonomous they have to decide whether uh whether we want to we made these mistakes and we want to improve on them nobody from outside should tell them that okay uh, you made this mistake and now improve it in the next sprint okay so john bain and uh, some of his colleagues in 2002 gave this framework for reflection right so whenever you do a retrospective you you might be probably using some kind of document where people use that uh, that very common template like what went well what went wrong and uh, what are the things that we can improve in future right so if you if you hand over that document to me i can clearly tell what is the level of maturity in in your retrospective right and you can also tell that so look at these five stages of maturity in retrospectives by john bay the first one is uh, let's say uh, i am a developer participating in a retrospective and i write that uh, in the what did not go well section i read i wrote that uh, one of the code developers uh, sat on my code review for 3 days which delayed my work right so i am just reporting the incident i am not i am not connecting the incident to my experience and feelings and thoughts i'm not using the incident to uh, with my knowledge and everything to tell that okay uh, i can understand why this happened and this is how this is how we should be 
fixing it for the future so reconstructing part is the topmost level of maturity so if you look at let's say there are eight people in the team and they give 20 points on the retro sheet you can easily map uh, map them against these five uh, maturity ratings and tell yourself that okay our team is at this maturity level there are maybe one or two people who are at level 5 but most of the team is at level 1 or 2 which is wrong you don't go to retro to just report the things right you go to retro to sit together and use your existing experience to tell uh, okay i think this happened due to this thing and uh, i should be uh, or we as as a team should be fixing it in this this manner now the very important part why why do we say that we should not do retros at the end i i don't believe in doing retros at the end uh, because of this reason so there is a thing called recency bias the book that i uh, showed in last slide uh, this one thinking fast and slow has a very good example of colonoscopy the experiment that dr uh, kaneman did with two colonoscopy patients uh, they recorded their pain threshold during the operation and even though patient a faced more pain collectively and had a longer procedure but when they when they were asked to remember the pain patient b said that he remembered more of the pain because in the last part of his operation was where he faced faced the most pain in the procedure which which says that uh, we mostly remember whatever happened very recently it's it's very common in performance management as well so as a manager let's say uh, i have to give an annual bonus to one of my reportees right i sit and think about reflect on uh, what he or she did in last year my judgment would be fully based uh, fully biased if i have not documented regularly maybe monthly or every 15 days or on certain events uh, i have not, if i have not journaled all these things during the year and i'm just going to sit and reflect on what that person did for one year and then uh, assign them a bonus that would be full of recency bias so i'll probably remember only the latest things and that can be injustice to them and similar thing happens in retrospectives as well and halo effect is uh, related to uh, let's say we did really well in the sprint and there was something which just which was a very minor thing if you ask the team but for a certain stakeholder very important person in the hierarchy it was a major major thing right so one major thing which was not even a major thing because it was important to some important person takes away all the good things that we did uh, so the whole emphasis is now suddenly on that one minor thing in the retrospective meeting so don't let halo effect uh, alter how you think about retrospectives and then there is law of small numbers right so when we when we sit together and i have seen that with uh, mostly uh, mostly the uh, indian engineers when when we sit together in a retrospective uh, with let's say uh, european and north american engineers they they don't feel empowered enough to speak about the problems that they face so law of small numbers says that if you choose a very small sample to uh, draw conclusions about a bigger group you are probably uh, not not getting the right indication of what has to be improved right and then there is some cost fallacy let's say uh, the team together wrote a new uh, logging framework for their software and now after two or three months they see that it's not maintainable it's causing a lot of problems but they don't want to get rid of it because they are emotionally invested in because they they did a lot of hard work in writing that and all of that stuff right so sunk cost fallacy says that the team is willing to drag that along and probably let their productivity hit but don't talk about it they don't want to talk about it because they were somehow emotionally invested in that effort right so as a as a as a meeting leader or a senior engineer in that meeting or for everyone else right you have to get rid of those things that are not making uh, 
any uh, meaningful addition to your work and now the takeaways i think we just have two minutes the takeaways the idea is to retrospect frequently and in the moment how do we do that so i i had uh, mentioned one very uh, radical idea that why not add one custom field on your tickets uh, if it is jira then customize jira to add a new field called lesson learned right so every time you work on a ticket uh, and you feel something bad happened something uh, happened that was not good uh, then you go ahead and add uh, add something to that not in the comment section maybe in a separate field right and once you start in the sprint and you start retrospecting you go through those lists uh, collate all of them and then think about those that would mean that you are journaling very regularly and your retrospection points are uh, not full of recency bias right and then reflection as a technique is a skill that can be taught i have a uh, link this paper in which uh, in which bain and some other researchers did a study on uh, teachers who were learning to uh, learning to teach to young students and they gave gave them some uh, daily journaling activity for 30 days and then they saw that reflection was something which could be improved by training and practice right we are not natural at reflection and uh, getting uh, purpose driven action items for future you have to practice and learn it and third but very important point enable fair communication distribution in the team as soon as you are the senior most person in a retrospection meeting if you are uh, and you see that there are only two people who are dominating and hijacking the whole discussion then uh, you have to make sure that everyone gets uh, gets a fair chance in speaking in at least the retrospective meeting that's that's very important both for retrospection as well as for the uh, psychological safety of the team and i think that's that's pretty much it we are at the top of time so if you want to connect connect with me this is my uh, twitter id and my linkedin id in twitter i usually do the humor stuff you can see a screenshot here and in linkedin i usually do the serious stuff so yeah thank you everyone